Hi, this is Kat with Beta Halik, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make the long Kumihimo necklace. Now, these are exclusive Beta Halik kits, which basically means that you will purchase the entire kit from us, and what you'll get in your kit is you'll get the Kumihimo disc, the bobbins, all the beads needed, you'll get a clasp, your E6000 glue, and you'll get the cord. You will need to add a few things from home, and for that, You'll just need a scrap of wire, a pen, a pair of scissors, a Kumihimo gator clip. Now, if you don't have a clip, you can always use a bag of pennies with a binder clip attached to it so that you can just use household items for that. You'll need some blue painter's tape and a ruler. Now, let me show you how beautiful these necklaces are. So I have an example here, and these necklaces are about 30 inches long. And there we go, I just wanna leave it clasped. They're really fluid and they're really, really fun. And they have a sort of graduated pattern going down the side, coming to a metallic focal, which is just really, really nice. And you have this nice, strong magnetic clasp. So it should be nice and tight for you. So this is the example that I have right here. This is our blue and rose gold. And we also have uh, six other color variations. And today I'm gonna do the teal and gold color variation. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so now we're all set and we're gonna start our Kumihimo and setting it up. So go ahead and take your Eslon cord. And for this necklace, you're going to need seven feet of cord eight times. So just go ahead and measure out your seven feet here. And you can just kind of eyeball it, but just make sure that you're doing at least seven feet. So that's my first strand. I'm gonna cut eight more just like it and then I'll be back to show you what you're gonna do with those. Okay, so I've cut all eight strands, seven feet each. And I just wanna point out that I have plenty of Eslon so you don't need to feel like you need to be stingy or that that's not enough. So go ahead and definitely do at least seven feet. So now I have all eight strands together and a couple inches from the uh, tail there, I'm just going to tie an overhand knot with all of them and just pull that through. And just for some extra security, I am going to double knot that. There we go, pull nice and tight. And then we have all of our strands ready to go. So now I'm gonna take my gator clip here and just open it up. And again, if you're just using a binder clip, you'll just need some sort of weight for the pennies just to hold the tension on your kumihimo. So now I'm just going to place that inside my disc right here. And now I'm going to take each strand and you'll just see how they sort of want to lay. So I'm gonna put this one up here and this one to the side. And what you're doing is you're just sort of separating all the strands here. And you'll notice that I'm putting them on either side of the four dots that are on your Kumihimo disc. So I'll put this one here. And you wanna just make sure that's in the center. So you just sort of pull all your strands nice and tight. Okay, so this is the first part of setting up your Kumihimo disc. And now you can see I have all these tails here. Let me get them all up on the table so you see how much cord we're working with. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to add my beads to my cord. But I do wanna point out that I'm gonna show you how to do this in the right order in order to make your pattern sit properly. So for the first part, and let me just show you on my finished piece here. For the first part of this necklace, which is about six inches, it's going to just be all that main color. So for right now, it's gonna be that teal color. So I'm just gonna load 40 beads onto each strand. Now here's where you'd want to adjust your length if you uh, think that 30 inches might be too long you'll just adjust the number of beads on each strand accordingly. So let's say you wanted it to be a little shorter, you can do uh, 35 beads on each strand, or if you wanted it to be even shorter, you could do 30 beads on each strand. 
but I want to let you know that this is the only place that you can actually adjust the length because once you get to here, it is a pattern. You could take some out of the center here if that's your preference, um, but these two portions right here where you have that graduation, um, you can, it, you just wouldn't be following the pattern that I have laid out for you. So just be aware of that before you start. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take my strand that is in between my 31 and 32. So just make sure I have that right strand. And now I'm going to string on 40 of my teal beads. Okay, so now I've strung 40 of the teal beads on this first strand, and I'm gonna take my first bobbin, and these are nice and flexible, so you just kinda pop them open. And I'm just gonna place that tail in there and just wind it around. And you'll have a lot of cord on this first one, so you'll definitely be winding for a minute. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna get about to there and I'm gonna close my bobbin and you'll see now that uh, I'm gonna let my beads sort of hit the bottom there and I have a little bit of uh, tail to work with. Now, because of what I said earlier with the pattern, you're gonna take some of that blue tape and what you're gonna do is you're gonna just use this to sort of hold it in place. So just kind of tape your bobbin just like so and I'm gonna take my pen and I'm gonna mark a number one, okay? So that's my first one that is all done. And now I'm just gonna repeat that all the way around and the numbers are gonna correspond, and I'll show you this when I'm finished, but just to get you started, this is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So go ahead and load 40 beads on each of those and number them appropriately. And I'll be right back to show you how to start your kumi. Okay, so now you should have your disc all set up and ready to go. So it would look something like this. So I have all of my bobbins down here and they're all labeled with their appropriate numbers. So now I'm gonna show you how to do the basic eight warp kumi himo braid. So we're gonna start with our number six down here and I'm gonna release that from the disc and I'm gonna bring it up over right in between the 30 and the 31. And now I'm gonna take this strand right here between the 32 and the one and bring it down on the other side so it's coming down between the 15 and the 14. And now I'm just gonna rotate my disc clockwise. And that's it, I'm just going to repeat. So you're always gonna start with the bottom one here and bringing it up and over and taking your top one and bringing it down and rotate. So once you sort of get the hang of this, this is really fun and really, really easy. So we're just gonna do a good inch or so before we add the beads, cause you're gonna need a portion to put your clasp. So just keep on braiding and rotating. And you'll start to see here in a few more what it's gonna start to look like. And I just wanna make a quick note in case you're wondering why I had to use the blue painter's tape. And the reason is because we're gonna do this in sections. So you're gonna be removing that tape several times. So you want it to stay sticky without making your bobbins sticky. So just go ahead and keep braiding. Okay, so I'm just finishing up my last one here. And what I wanna make sure to do, when I have enough braided, and you can kinda of see down, down here, I have about three quarters of an inch, which should be enough to add my clasp. And you can see that nice, beautiful braiding right there. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to finish where my threads are on my dots again. So if you look down here at my bobbins, I have them in order again. So they go seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it doesn't matter where they are on the board, you're just gonna want them to sort of be in order as you work around, because that'll help your pattern. So now I just finished this part, so I'm gonna rotate. And now we're gonna start to add the beads. So go ahead and take off your strand, the same technique, 
and you're just gonna slide one bead down and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it catches underneath that first thread right there before bringing it across. So you see how it sort of just sits down right in there? So that's what you're gonna to wanna to do. And now with every braid, you're gonna to wanna to add one bead and sort of slide it down and just tuck it under right there and just continue to rotate. And you'll start to see the beaded pattern develop nicely for you. And slide it over. And you see how they're just sort of being caught by those threads right there? And you'll just continue in the same manner until you've reached the end of your beads here. And I do just wanna show you one more trick before I let you go off and finish this portion. So let's say I want to take a break because this necklace will take you a very long time to complete. <laughs> Actually, it'll probably take you about six to eight hours depending on how fast you weave. So I'm working on this one thread here and now I have three threads up here, two, two, and one. So now I can put my work down and come back to it later. And when I pick it up, I know that I'm going to start with that third thread and then I'm just going to continue. So this is a great way to just sort of put it down and you can come back to it whenever you're ready. But for now, go ahead and continue beading and I will be back to show you the next portion when you are all finished with your six inches. Okay, so I'm just finishing up my last couple of strands here. And you'll notice that I now have one bead left on my bottom one and I'm just gonna slide that down, catch that thread and bring it up top. Now, if you look down here, I have my nice beading happening and my strand without the beads, which is good. And so I'm just gonna set my work down just to sort of show you what I'm working with here. So all of my strands have no beads left on them, but I have three up top here, and this is the last strand, and this is my last little bead right here. And the reason I'm doing this is just to leave my strands so I know where to pick up. And again, you'll notice that my dots have lined up nicely after the 40 beads and the rotations. So now my number one is right over here. So I'm just gonna sort of set this to the side and I'm going to take my tape off and unravel my bobbin. And the next section that we're gonna do is the sort of tapered section with the beads scattering down through the side. So this is number one, and in your instruction pamphlet, you'll have the entire pattern to do all eight, but I'm gonna do this first one with you so that it's very clear what you're looking for. So for number one, we're gonna start with five of your main color, and in this case, it's the turquoise. So there's five turquoise, slide that down. One accent bead, in this case, it's the gold. And now I have 10 of my main color. Let's just double check that's 10. There we go. One of my accent color. Eight of the main. Now two accent colors, one and two, slide those down, five main colors, two of the accent, three of the main, and three of the accent. So now I have these 40 beads on my strand, and now all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rewind it around my bobbin. Now each strand will have a different pattern, and that is how you get the sort of scattered effect. So just pay attention to which thread you're working with, and this is why we number them. And also, if you do want to change up the pattern, um, do, so, do so at your own discretion. But just note that you're going to want to have equal number of beads on each of the eight strands. 
So now you can just move on to number two, follow along in your instruction pamphlet and you can string the rest of the beads and then you'll be back and you just continue and you're ready to go. So go ahead and add the rest of your beads and then continue with the next portion. And I'll be back to show you how to do the focal portion. Okay, so I'm just finishing up my last couple from that section and rotating. And I'm gonna leave this one here because this over here is my last bead that I'm adding in this section. So now you can see sort of how it's developing, sort of got that graduated style to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that down. And what we're gonna do next is we're going to do this portion here, which is the metallic focal. So now all you're going to do is work in the same order and you're going to add 40 beads onto each strand of your metallic focal color. So just go ahead and remove that. Pop open your bobbin, take your thread off. And simply just start stringing your beads. And I'll be back to show you how to do the next portion, which is this portion here, showing you how to degraduate it as you go through the other side. But go ahead and add all of your beads and continue your braiding. Okay, so now I'm just gonna finish up my last one here. And now that I have uh, enough of my braid right here, you can see in the center, I'm gonna leave all four outstretched there. And let me just bring this all up on the table. And now I'm just gonna take my scissors and just go around and trim off my bobbins. And now I'm just gonna go through and just sort of pull that down and remove my disc, take my strands, tie a nice knot there. And it doesn't have to be pretty, you're just gonna cut this off anyway, just to secure these ends. There we go, I'll just take all four strands, do a quick little knot at the end. There we go just to secure those ends. So now I'm just gonna set up to do my clasp. I'm gonna remove all my bobbins here. And I'm gonna take two of them actually and unwind them. And in order to not have any waste, I'm gonna use these two tails to help secure and fatten up those ends to have that nice seamless magnetic clasp. Okay, so I'm gonna do one on camera here. And this is a very important step. You're gonna take your magnetic clasp and unclasp it, set one side aside. As it is drying, you wanna make sure that they don't uh, touch together. So, there we go. I'm just gonna get a little bit of glue on my thing there. And now take your end and you're just gonna do a nice knot on one side. Tie that nice and tight. And now we're just gonna wrap it around. And this is what I you know, sort of call fattening up that end because we want it to be that nice seamless. So you're just gonna wrap that right around there. And then just keep it going. Looking pretty good. So just hold that end that I've been wrapping around and have that end from the inside there. I'm just gonna tie a little knot. And I'm just gonna double knot that. There we go. Okay. And you can sort of see how deep the well is on your magnetic clasp. So you just see like how far down you want it to go. And I am actually going to wrap a little bit more just for that extra security. There we go. Okay, and one more knot. There we go. Okay, 
So now I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim off my ends here. And I'm going to cut this braided portion here. So now my ends look like this. Okay, so now just take your scrap of wire or your toothpick and go ahead and get a nice, nice size glob of glue. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna put it into your well and just sort of swirl it around, make sure it sort of gets all over those edges there. And put a little bit more glue Try to get it all the way towards the bottom. This is where you really want to secure. There we go. Okay. And now just go ahead and take your end and you're just going to kind of, I like to twist as I'm putting it on. So you just kind of swirl it on and then just press it down just a couple of minutes. And then, like I said, you're gonna to wanna to let this dry for at least 24 hours before you want to wear it. But there you go, it looks nice and seamless and make sure, again, to not clasp them. So I'm gonna finish the other side off camera and I will be right back. So there you have it. That's how to make our exclusive Beta Holly kits and these are the long Kumihimo necklaces. Now what's great about these is if you've actually already purchased a Kumihimo kit from us, it means you already have your disc and bobbins. So we do offer what we call refill kits, which will actually include the beads, the eslon that you'll need to make it, and your clasp. So you can just get started with this and it'll again come with a full complete instructions. And you can watch this video again if you like. But you can choose from all of our beautiful colors and you can either purchase a kit from us for the first time and we know that you'll fall in love with it so you can come back and buy a refill kit. You can find all of these at Beta Halik dot com.